There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Hello, my friends, and welcome to April's Homemade. Anna is playing in her bed while I change my sheets this morning. It is a Friday and we have a we have an abbreviated school day on Fridays usually. We are going to be going to a friend's house for dinner. We're going to bring food to that. My little girls are reading on the couch. They are really enjoying Lauren's potty books that I recently got out. We are in the midst of potty training. And I plan to do a video more about that soon. That book right there is definitely our favorite, or my children's favorite, potty book. But they do really like all three of the books that I use. So I am just giving you a little sneak peek on that. Now I am going to get started on my laundry, we do about three to five loads of laundry today as a, or every day as a family of 11. So I always need to get that going right away. And I'm going to put Anna on the floor in this laundry basket. It works out really nicely for her to just sit in a laundry basket and watch everything that I'm doing because it is hard to hold her and reach way down in that washer. I had to wash this pillow because, well, it did get some baby poop on it yesterday, so. If you are new here, I'm April and I am a blessed mama of nine children. And this is April's Homemade. I'm going to show you my baby sitting down there in the laundry basket. That has worked really well for me for many years now. I will just set my baby there so that she can see me and watch what we're doing and she's happy for just, they're always happy for changes of scenery just like we are. So I try to move my baby around the house each day with me. Wherever I am, she goes, whether I am carrying her in my baby sling or I just find a place for her to sit and watch what I am doing. Babies long to be with their mamas. All they want is to be with you. Now you've seen Lauren up here before. She loves to get to pour the soap in. Sarah is joining us today. She wanted to pour some of the soap in, so we're going to let her do that too. Have you subscribed to this channel yet? I would love to have you here. These collapsible laundry baskets are pretty much essential for a small laundry room. I'm going to grab my sheets and my blanket to throw into the washer. Now I am coming into the kitchen. I'm going to wash that stack of bowls because that is left over after my son loaded the dishwasher this morning. We run our dishwasher about three times a day because we are a family of 11. And sometimes I just have to wash the extra ones as well. I was thinking today that I might talk to you a little bit about the elephant in the room, the nine children. I'm aware that 
there is some ne negativity toward larger families in some circles. And I know that that is partially because when larger families make mistakes or family members of larger families make mistakes, that becomes very public. And largely because they are in a bigger family and that does put you in the spotlight, even, even in your small community. But I think it's important to realize that you can be a bad parent with nine children and you can be a bad parent with two children. It is not the number of children that determines whether or not you are treating your children well. And I wanted to say also that having nine children or seven or eight or 10, um, that does not make you a good parent. It is a good thing to desire children because you believe what the scriptures say and you know that children are a blessing and that they are a reward from God but having more children does not necessarily equal godliness especially if it is for the wrong reasons you know, God has a number for each of us that he has determined, a number of children that he has determined, and whatever that number is, that is the right number. And I think one thing that we sometimes don't realize is that we are not actually entitled to have any children and we are so so blessed if the Lord if the Lord blesses us physically to be able to have more children but we are so blessed if he gives us one child you know our society is so focused on not having children but then of course when we want a child at the time of our choosing we expect the Lord to give to give us that baby and I see that there are a lot of consequences to this attitude that we have toward God we're really not entitled to getting to have any children. The Lord does not owe us anything. He has done everything for us. Every breath we breathe is a gift. And the Lord has given and given and given. We have homes, we have food, we have families. We sin against him, and yet he invites us to call him Father. And so I often feel that we, we kind of look at having children in sort of a backwards way. We think that we can just have them when we want them and not have them when we don't want them and that is not that is not trusting in the Lord but it does work both ways you know we we do not deserve to have children we are not entitled to them and if the Lord blesses us with one or two or ten we are so blessed. So I do think it is a bit presumptuous to say, well, I'm going to have three children or I'm going to have 12 children. We really don't know. 
You know, I am very blessed that the Lord has preserved my body and I am able to have had nine children. I do not know. I do not know what the Lord's plan for me is, but I trust it. I trust Him. I know that it's very easy for people to assume that I have more of a legalistic approach when it comes to having children just because of my number of children. Um, but I believe that I am saved by the grace of God not by my number of children. And I just don't really look at it that way. I, I don't feel that I have to have nine children. I feel that I get to have nine children. Um, and that's not to say that it has always been easy or felt easy. You know, being a mother is actually the hardest thing I have ever done. Starting with the birth, the births, and raising them. I often feel pressed on every side. But by the grace of God, I am pressed, but not crushed. Being a mother is also the most rewarding thing I've ever done. The Lord has molded me and shaped me through it. His strength has been perfected in my weakness. He has shown me to not seek my own, to be more self-controlled, to love more deeply, to fight my laziness. I do not do these things perfectly. I fail daily. But the Lord teaches me that the more I rely on Him, the more that I seek His Word and pray, the more fruit He produces from my faith that He has given me. And I am so thankful that I have not missed out on this, that I have not missed out on all these little faces, all of these hugs, all of, all of the laughter, all of the love and joy and, and faith that he has grown within me. Being a mother is absolutely a faith building exercise it is such an incredible growth opportunity and that is why it can feel so hard at times because the lord is molding you and shaping you he is sanctifying you you are being made holy and that is not easy, but that is, that is the will of our Father, is that we would be sanctified completely. I have had a lot of people come to me and they want me to tell them how many children they should have. And the Lord has simply not said, Thou shalt have a certain number of children. Here's what he has said. He told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. He says in 1 Timothy that a woman will be saved through childbearing. He says the fruit of the womb is a reward that children are a heritage of the Lord, and that blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. If you were in a battle, which you are, you are in a spiritual battle, 
Would you not want your quiver to be full of arrows? We also know that it is a good thing for a man and his wife to come together. And in fact, it is essential for the marriage. And I think we need to take that into consideration as well, that the two shall become one flesh and that that is essential for the health of your marriage. I just want to offer you that perspective. I want to, I want to encourage you because I am not, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you have to have nine children. I do think that I do think that we can often have more children than we realize. Um, I do think that we I do like to encourage women to have a quiver full and I don't know what that number is I do know that your reason for your number of children should be to the glory of God and that decision is between you and your husband and the Lord and don't be concerned if if you and your husband feel differently about this because I have seen that a lot of times when the husband and the wife feel differently about it you know maybe one feels that the their quiver is full and one does not that actually encourages the couple to seek the Lord on this issue and to really think more deeply about it that is a good thing and you know if you are the wife and you want more children but your husband does not you are you are free of that decision by submitting you to your husband's will on it you do not need to put that burden on your shoulders if you feel strongly that you should have another child, tell your husband. Tell him. Tell him respectfully, but you don't need to feel bad if your husband says, we need, we need to, we need to be done having children. And you are obeying the Lord because you are obeying your husband. Every person whom the Lord intends to exist will exist. The Lord is sovereign. He has decided who will walk this earth. And we are not going to stop him. We are not going to stop the one who upholds the universe by the word of his power. So when you make your decision, think about what are your reasons for having more or fewer children? Do you want to have more children so that you can look righteous? I will just tell you it is not as glamorous as you might think. Or do you want to have fewer children so that you can have nicer things? Both of these reasons are for vanity's sake. Or do you want to glorify God? The decision is between you, your husband, and God. Pray to the Lord. He will answer you. The last thing that I feel I must say is that I would never encourage women to take birth control pills 
And of course, I would never recommend you have an abortion. Abortion is murder. And I don't believe that we can trust birth control pills when it comes to our health and the lives of our unborn children. Anna is going down for a nap. So me and Shannon are going to get cooking in the kitchen. We are going to go to our friend's house this evening. And we're going to make a red velvet cake, some cookie bars, and some Spanish rice. We are getting together with some church friends, with several families tonight. And when we do that, I like to bring extra food, partly because we are a large family and it is so sweet for someone to invite us over because it's a lot to take on and so that's one reason I like to bring extra food but also we just enjoy it we enjoy bringing something tasty to share with everyone Shannon loves to make beautiful cake I am actually making some rolls behind her because our family is just eating a lot of rolls right now. <laughs> so I just keep them coming. So I am doing that. Shannon is pouring in some delicious chocolate chips. And real quick, I am going to lightly set my table I talked about this on my last video, my decorating video, and I also shared some marriage strengthening tips on there as well if you want to watch it, but I'm going to go ahead and lightly set my table this afternoon because we're not going to be using it for dinner. We're going to our friend's house. And I love to just have it looking nice when we return home. It is little things like this that really helps make your family enjoy your home. And it, it gives you just homemaking satisfaction. And it makes you love your job as a wife and a mommy. I am whipping up a quick pot of Spanish rice because we are having fajitas tonight at our church friend's house. And just to keep the productivity up, I am going to also make some sausage patties while I'm cooking this rice, um, the sausage patties are going to be for breakfasts. But I, as you know, I am always trying to make more than one thing at a time. Because it'll be breakfast before you know it. And Shannon is making those cookie bars. Those are so good. They are just some homemade cookie bars. And there's our red velvet cake. Shannon iced it beautifully. She made a cream cheese frosting for it. It was so good. Lauren is waking up from her nap now. So I am saying hi to her. My rolls are going on their second rise, and Lauren had to have a little bite of cookie. I love to put desserts in these decorative pie dishes. Just makes them look more special and delicious. I'm going to show you my favorite soap that I use, this Dr. Bronner's Pure Castell Soap. It is amazing. We buy it by the gallon on Amazon. That is all I have for you today. I cannot thank you enough for 
being here and watching this video. I hope that you will like and subscribe and that you have a lovely week. And I will see you soon.